Then our next speaker is Izumi Tanaka from the University of Tokyo, and he's going to talk about ownership types for verification. Okay, uh, hello, I'm Izumi Tanaka from the University of Tokyo. Uh, we propose a fully automatic verification method <coughs> for imperfect programs with pointer arithmetic. Uh, here's an example of a target program. Uh, which includes uh, pointer arithmetic and assertion, like this. Uh, the verification goal is to check the lack of assertion failures in this kind of program containing pointer arithmetic. Uh, our method is an extension of the approach of consort proposed by Thoman et al., uh, which combines refinement types and fractional ownership types. This is an outline of the rest of this talk. Uh, first, let me review the idea of consult. A consult is an automated verification tool for imperative programs with mutable references, but uh, without pointer arithmetic. As I said, uh, it is based on a type system combining refinement types and fractional ownership types. Uh, let's see through examples uh, how to use ownership types to handle mutable references. Uh, this program creates x as a reference to 0, um, creates an alias y for x, and then updates the value of x to 1. The assertion on the last line fails because x was updated to 1 the value of y has also been updated to 1. Uh, if in every apply refinement types, uh, we may perform the following wrong reasoning. First, on the first line, x is given the this type, and, uh, which means that x is a reference to an integer 0. On the second line, y is given the same type. A problem occurs on the third line. Uh, as x is updated to 1, we are tempted to change only the type of x to this one, meaning that x is now a reference to the integer 1, and leaves the type of y as it is. But that is wrong uh, because y is actually on alias of x, so the type of y should also be updated. In fact, with this type of y, we will wrongly conclude that the assertion on the last line will succeed. To address this issue, a consort combines fractional ownerships with refinement types. And here, we have added ownership 1 and 0 to the types of x and y. Uh, 1 represents the full ownership for the difference, so x can freely read or update it. On the other hand, uh, 0 represents no ownership, so the refinement type of y on the third line cannot be trusted. Hence, we cannot wrongly conclude that the value of y is 0. Uh, this is a slight variation of the previous example, where the value of y is now asserted to be 1. And the alias information, this, uh, which tells the type system a hint that y is an alias of x. Uh, thanks to the alias information, the type system of consort can redistribute a part of the ownership of x to y. 1 is divided to 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. <coughs> and propagate uh, refinement type information to y. And now, since we have information that the value of y is 1, we can conclude that the assertion on the last line will succeed. Let me summarize the notion of fractional ownerships in consort. 
Uh, an ownership is a real number between 0 and 1, which is assigned to each reference type. Uh, when alias are created, we maintain the invariant that the sum of ownership for the aliases is at most 1. The ownership 1 represents the full access to a reference, so that the refinement type can be updated. And uh, 0 means no ownership, so the refinement type information cannot be trusted. And an intermediate value between 0 and 1 means that uh, refinement can be trusted but uh, cannot be updated. Now, let me explain our extension to handle pointer arithmetic. In consort, as I've explained, a refinement type represents the ownership and refinement type information for the cell pointed to by the reference. In the presence of pointer arithmetic, however, we need to let a pointer have ownerships for memory cells around the cell referred to by the pointer, not just for the single cell at P. Uh, for example, uh, for this expression to be valid, P should have an ownership for the cell pointed to by P plus 1 instead of P itself. So we extend the syntax of types like this. Uh, this is the type of integers that satisfy phi. Uh, for example, uh, this type is a type of uh, integer 3, and this type is type of point, point positive integer. And this is the type of um, pointer uh, where tau describes the type of the value stored at p plus i. In this figure, the value p0 has a type this, uh, where the index i in tau is substituted by 0. And the value p1 has a type this, uh, where the index i in tau is substituted by 1. And here, uh, R called an ownership function. It's a function that takes an index i and returns the ownership for the cell at p plus i. In this figure, the pointer p has ownership uh, on the cell referred to by p and has an ownership r1 on the next cell. Uh, let's take a look at examples. Uh, this is the type of pointer which refers to the head of an array of length 10. Uh, here, uh, this expression is a shorthand for uh, this function. And this is the type of pointer which refers to the head of an array with first element 0. And this is the type of pointer which refers to the second cell of the array. Here, a refinement describes the value in the cell which is one cell before, the one referred to by the pointer. And this ownership function has ownership from index minus 1 to 8. And this is the type of pointer which refers to the head of an array with 0 in the first half and 1 in the second half. Let's uh, take a look at typing example. Uh, this function named init takes an integer x and a pointer p as arguments and initializes zeros to x minus one values of p with zero. First, uh, p has no refinement information. Uh, first, uh, this program check if the length x is positive or not, and assign 0 to head of p. Then the program makes a new pointer q and recursively call init function. Finally, the 
from index 0 to index x minus 1 are initialized with 0. And now let's take a look at the typing of this program. Uh, the type of function is this. Uh, before a function call, p has no refinement information and has ownership of the cells from 0, p0 to px minus 1, like this figure. And after the function call, uh, P's refinement is changed to this uh, new equal zero. And let's take a look at the function body. Uh, when assigning zero to P, the refinement is updated like this. The value of the cell referred to by P is updated to zero. Next, with the point addition, Ownership of P is divided like this. A P has an ownership only at index 0, and Q has ownership from index 0 to index x minus 2. As this figure shows, Q has now no refinement information. Next, when calling init function recursively, the type of P <coughs> uh, its argument Q changes based uh, on the type of the function. Now, uh, all elements of Q are initialized with the value zero, like this. Finally, ownership are redistributed <coughs> based on this area's information. Here, ownership are gathered to P. Uh, as a result, the type of P matches the function type after the call. Next, I will introduce the formalization of our type system. A type judgment is formed like this. Uh, this gamma is type environment, and this theta is the function type environment. And this type judgment means that uh, the expression E is well typed under theta and gamma, and the expression E evaluates to a value of type tau, and the gamma describes ownership and refinement types before the execution of E, and gamma prime describes those after the execution. For example, before execution, X has full ownership from their index 0 to 4, and after executing let Y equal X, uh, ownership are divided into Y. Consequently, x has half ownership from index 0 to 4. Well, here's an example of typing rules. Uh, this is rule for assignment. For this assignment to be valid, p must have a pointer type as described in this type environment. And p must have the full ownership 1 as described by this I premise R0 equal 1. After the assignment, the type of the value stored at P is updated to tau P prime. Here, uh, this condition says that the value of P0 is now N, and this condition says that the values of the other cell remains unchanged. And next, let me explain our type inference procedure, which serves as an automated verification procedure. Uh, this is an overview of our type inference process. And the overall flow of the inference process is the same as consult. But uh, please note that the second step of ownership inference is much more challenging because we have introduced ownership functions. In fact, this part is one of the main contributions of our work. So I focus on explaining this part in the inference process. The outline of the type inference process is as follows. Uh, first, we use simple type inference like this. <coughs> Next, the ownership function at each program point is inferred by ownership inference. Finally, we infer refinement like this. Ownership inference is done in these steps. Uh, first, 
for each program point, we prepare templates of ownership type <coughs> environment and introducing variable representing a known ownership function. Now our goal in this process is to infer these functions. Next, we generate constraints on the function variables based on the typing rules. For example, on the first line, P must have full ownership at index zero due to the assignment of zero to the head of P. Then this constraint is generated. And on the second line, we generate this constraint because ownerships are divided through pointer addition. We then solve the constraints collected from the entire program. Uh, however, these constraints on function variables cannot be effectively solved by off-the-shelf SMT solvers. To address this issue, we restrict the shape of ownership function to this form. Here, the value of ownerships are represented by W, and boundaries of cells with the ownership value are expressed by linear expressions of integer variables in the program. We prepare variables that represent this unknown ownership value W, as well as unknown coefficients C and D. Based on that, uh, we can reduce the constraints on function variables to constraints on variables W and C I and D I. In our example, uh, the resulting constraint is this. Uh, this constraint is changed to this, and this is changed to this. And now, our goal in this process is to infer these number constraints, uh, W and C and D. Unfortunately, however, the resulting constraints still cannot be effectively solved by off-the-shelf SMT solvers because the constraint involves nested quantifier like this. So we iteratively approximate this formula to this uh, in a counterexample guided manner. Uh, well, the universal, <coughs> the universal quantified in formula is replaced by the conjunction of formulas obtained by instantiating variables x to several concrete values. And this concludes the ownership inference, and the next step is refinement inference. And this process is almost the same as consult. First, a template is prepared at each program point, and here, Sura x is variables in program. Subsequently, constraints are generated based on the typing rules. And these constraints are in the form of constraint home clauses. And we use CH solver to solve them. Uh, if refinements can be inferred, then we can say the type inference is successful. Next, I'll explain our experiments. <coughs> we implemented an automated verification tool. Uh, the input of our tool is a program with no annotation, uh, which means no type annotation, no ownership annotation, and no alias annotation. The output of the tool is safe or unknown. If the tool successfully types a program, we can say the program is safe. Conversely, if the tool cannot type a program, we can only say the safety of the program is unknown. We conducted verification on some benchmarks prepared for our experiments. And this is the result. We compared our tool with an existing verification tool, Shihon, which is a CHC-based automatic verifier for C. As you can see from the result, we successfully impart ownership and refinement for these programs. In other words, we can verify the safety of these programs. 
Uh, let me introduce a benchmark program. Uh, this is SumDiv, a summation function. We divide the array into two half here, a P and Q, like this. And because we call the summation function in each here and here. Then we return the sum of them. Uh, in the main program, we prepare an array initialized with non-negative values and assert the sum of values in the array is no less than zero. Uh, our tool could verify this program. Uh, let me explain related work. There are some free automated verification methods for pointer manipulating programs. However, these methods do not work well in the presence of pointer arithmetic. In fact, they not effectively <coughs> Uh, handle our benchmark. Additionally, uh, there are some semi-automated verification condition generation approaches to pointer manipulating programs. These approaches cover a wider range of pointer operations such as XOR, but require heavy human interventions like annotations of loop invariant and pre or post condition for recursive function. And this is the summary of this presentation and our future work. Thank you. Thank you for your talk. Um, do you have any questions? Uh, thank you for the talk. It was very cool. Uh, I really liked it. Uh, I was interested about, so the, um, you mentioned that you had to take this approach for uh, approximating the solutions for your um, inference equations to be when for because you couldn't use an off-the-shelf SMT solver. <coughs> um, so, is it sort of correct to say that uh, you are you are sort of restricted in the pointer arithmetic that you can approximate here? Um, so here you are doing addition, but are you restricted that you can't do many other operations, or can you? Do uh. Oh, sorry, uh, I couldn't understand. Uh, please, uh, <coughs> one more. Sorry. Oh. The, so the uh, I'm curious. So here you mentioned that you have to use this uh, approximation approach. I wonder if this approximation approach restricts the kind of pointer arithmetic that is now possible on the uh, on the sort of formulae that you have. So you said you restricted the shape of the formulae to be the shape with the variables that you showed. So does this mean that you can't do pointer arithmetic with XOR now, in the future, at all? Uh, or other functions, <coughs> for example, I would like to know. Mm. Uh, actually, uh, we, uh, now, uh, we didn't uh, think about uh, other operations like XOR, uh, so I now I can't uh, say clearly, uh, but mm. yeah, yeah. So certainly the restriction on the shape of ownership functions uh, has to do with the fact that we cannot use XOR. Yeah, because the, now we only allow ownership functions where. Uh, so we only allow a pointer that has uh, ownership for a contiguous memory region. But in the case of XOR, you have to ownership for some uh, more, you know, more general form. Okay? And by the way, so the approximation on the phase C does not have to do with uh, our restriction on pointer operations. That's just a kind of trick to solve the nested quantified constraints. Hi, uh, thanks for the talk. So regarding your experiments, did you try out or find any um, benchmark that uh, cannot be handled by your approach? Uh, yes. Uh, oh, mm. okay, uh, we, <coughs> we conducted an uh, experiment on some these uh, simple examples only. Okay. So, 
I see, okay. Um, yeah, thanks. Hello. Uh, th thanks for a very good talk. Uh, what I was curious about is, do you have any examples where you uh, separate the ownership and then put it back together, maybe like in the quick sort function, where you divide it into two arrays, sort, and then put it back together? Uh, a sort, sort, sort function? Yeah. Uh, uh, to handle sort function is... Uh, Ah, okay. Hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, um, so nested pointers is kind of a well-known challenge for any kind of ownership analysis. Can you say a little bit more about your plan uh, on that? Nested pointers. Nested, ah, nested pointers. pointers. Yes. Well, so what... what uh, it, it, it's a well-known challenge for ownership analysis. Can you say a little bit more about that? What do you plan to do, and, and what are the challenges you foresee? Uh, 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 about uh, future work? Yes. Uh, okay, uh, we can, uh, actually, uh, our type system can handle nested pointers, but uh, now our tool cannot. For, uh, uh, because uh, we, we, our tool is now prototype. It, it's just a matter of implementation. Yeah. 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 I'll ask a quick question if that's okay. Uh, wh wh which CHC solver did you use? Oh, uh, we use uh, Spacer and Hoist. Me. Other than I've got a, a question, so I was curious about what's the inference rule like for conditionals. So in your examples, all the conditionals basically had one trivial case, like one one of the branches was basically a base case. But what happens if the if you have kind of complex? Uh, branches basically both do something interesting. How do you then uh, type the conditional? Uh, hmm? uh, uh, so you, you gave one example for an inference rule for your type inference. Right? And uh, I was just curious what the type inference rules for conditional looks like um, because I can kind of guess what it is for if, if one of the branches is more or less does nothing, like it's a base case and nothing interesting happens. But what, what does the, the rule for the conditional looks, look like, the type inference rule? If you can sketch that on a... Uh, a con conditional. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. So, to just the idea, how do you merge these types? Sorry? It's just like a refinement type system. Just the right, yeah, yeah. So you, you can basically have uh, co uh, complex uh, operations on both branches. That's not a problem. Yeah. Okay, then if we don't have any other... Questions, then let's thank the speaker again.